What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Imperfect. I'm your host, Gage Horn. And, you know, we're taking a break from the Zoom meetings, as you guys may have seen in the last couple of episodes. I have some podcasts with just myself, and there's two reasons for that. One, I have a bunch of ideas that I just kind of want to talk about and get to you guys. And two, I Zoom meetings, like, kind of suck. The quality is not up to par, and since we can't bring guests to our where we rent, be, uh, you know, because of COVID and they're not allowing outside people to come through... Can't do any like in person guests. We have to do it via Zoom, which leads to terrible quality. So I like doing these because it's better quality. Gives you guys, you know, we get some one on one interaction. But on top of that, I just want to like run through all of these ideas that I have and some uh, and some topics I want to talk about. What you read, buying a house during the coronavirus, which we're gonna dump, jump into. I have a couple of things that I think I just want to kind of throw out there and mention, and alongside just the update of where Imperfect is at, right? Um, so I'll just start uh, from the beginning, you know, like uh, me and my fiance graduated college, super excited. Um, we're actually going to be leaving our town where I was born and raised, which can be a bit scary because I've lived this place, this town for my whole life, 24 years, besides maybe like a year or two when I was like a kid. I can't remember when I lived in Utah, but in Idaho, man, like this has just been my home in this little town. So it's a little bit scary, but I'm excited. I'm excited to grow the business, grow the podcast, things like that. So that's why one of the big reasons why we decided to move. Um, so we're going to a full-on city with much more people, but also like a lot more to do. So I'm excited. Excuse me. I'm excited and scared at the same time, but I think it's going to be a very exciting uh, time. I'm just, you know, I was a little bit nervous, but the more closer it gets, the more I'm kind of just really excited to, to try something new, be somewhere new and shoot things that aren't the same angles that I've shot in this town for like, even when I was dancing for the last 10 years, you know, like just shooting everything here. So it's going to be exciting. I'm excited for a new place. But um, so yeah, we're going to be moving. And so the first thing that I kind of wanted to really jump on and talk about from going from renting to a house, right, is that um, we're kind of on a timeline, right? And so of course, if it was ideal, and what I'd love is, I would love a good awesome studio slash podcast set right studio to maybe film stuff but also um be able to have a spot for my editing setup a nice good space to edit because that's where i'm at 24 7 and to also have a podcast set and a podcast set has been in my mind forever right if we, if we got like a, a four bedroom home which we'll talk about but it's extremely difficult especially during these times um there's the houses are just crazy we'll get into it but point being is is if I could and we had an extra room, we'd be able to turn it into a podcast set and I'd have a designated spot for my guest and to do shows. And it would just be so exciting and so thrilling um, to kind of continue this conversation uh, with just so many different people up there. I just have so many people I want to interview and I've been, you know, I DM so many people, so many people <laughs> that uh, a lot of them live up there uh, where I'm going and especially just a city. It's just so much more people to do, so much more business owners, so much more people that have done things and you know we just you know all of our guests uh, have been located in this town of uh, Pocatello Idaho so you know it's been awesome but just ready to go so um but yeah like the idea the goal is to get a podcast set you know and it's just like as I'm looking I'm you know of course it's like what you you gotta you gotta be happy with what you get right um but uh it's just like that's something in my mind like oh four bedrooms well this could have a podcast set you know maybe something looking more deeper into you know um, but aside from that, it's just uh, finding a home in general. So like I was saying, uh, it is crazy hard to buy a house. Crazy hard. We're gonna be we're gonna be moving to Boise, Idaho, which is just lots of people. I think I read at one point, at least within the last couple of months before coronavirus, uh, that it was the fastest growing city in America. Damn. <laughs> It's like, that's crazy. And we're like, hey, let's move there. You know, a lot of people from California are finding out about it. It's a beautiful place. So big. So much to do. When you talk about Boise, you talk about Boise, Napa, Meridian, Eagle. Just there's so many uh, cities around it that just together make it just huge, you know, and so much going on, which is, you know, good and bad thing. But it's exciting none nonetheless, right? And so... Looking at places up there, though, especially right now, looking for houses and things, there's just not a much like not a market up there. You know, we've always been kind of looking, which, by the way, is my first piece of advice. Don't buy a house until you get financing, because holy 
holy crap do houses go fast maybe just in general but up right now during this plus in such a fast growing city it's going crazy and let me give you an example is about a month ago we started our house buying process and of course you can't help to download zillow and start looking at some houses right we're looking at some houses and you're peeking at some houses and you're just like oh man like i really love this one right and so we actually had a saved list of probably 20 houses between us not even a week and a half to two weeks later, every one of them, besides one, all 19 houses were sold, um, and majority of them being sold within a week of when we listed all of them. And so it was just crazy. I was like, what is happening? And now it's gotten, I think, a little bit worse. Um, we've been getting a, real, a lot closer with our financing, and then about five days before we're about to go to Boise and start like actually looking at these houses with a realtor, all five houses sold in five days because um, you want to, you know, can't give a realtor 20 houses and drive around all day, right? So we just picked our top five and they sold. So even then, we added and dropped some houses just until the day we were about to leave. The night before, we finally added five houses that were still on sale the next two days that we were able to look at. And uh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake because financing, let me tell you guys, has been a huge huge difficulty. So when you're buying a house uh, during the coronavirus, the government has put a lot of restrictions and just bank lenders and things like that. Um, I don't want to say restrictions, but whatever, however you may say, it's just a lot harder for people to give you money because they don't know if you're going to pay it right. It, things are so crazy that things are literally shifting day by day that you, <laughs> it's, it's difficult because before, your first home buyer, right, is you can sometimes, uh, if you're, depending on your credit, your situation, you can get into a home without 0% down, like no money down, right? And of course, for a first home buyer, that's ideal, like, right? Me and my fiance just spent lots of money going to school, paying our bills, paying our credit down, getting our credit scores best they can be so we can get a great deal on our house. And so, you know, we don't really have much backup income, right? And plus, we're college students. Who, What college student has money, right? And so... We finally, uh, you know, get through this financing, and as we're looking at all these houses, uh, didn't matter. You know, we looked at these houses between two days, and it took about three to four days to kind of figure out financing. And in that time, we lost all houses, and one of them was the home that I like. I loved so much. It had this beautiful office, just beautiful office, and. Uh, I loved it. It would have been a perfect space for a set, for the podcast, for editing. It would have just been the perfect room that could do it all. And it was just, just so, I loved the vibe of it, right? But that's what happens is you lift your hopes up and you can't buy the house. <laughs> so, you know, because you don't have financing. So make sure you get pre-approved. Make sure you get your financing down. Don't even look at houses. It's so tempting. But at least just don't even get your hopes up. Like, because houses are going to come and go so fast that you just want to make sure financing is done first right we're first first home buyers and that we didn't know that but i'm telling you guys now and now or in the future when you buy a home a lot of you guys that probably bought homes are like well duh but you know it's not like we have you know people kind of like throwing information our way we're kind of just figuring this stuff out but uh yeah that was kind of the biggest issue was uh to to get approved for a house it you know just do it first just do it first it'll save so much but yeah, so with the financing is there's just no such thing right now as getting 0% down. Uh, we've talked to four to five different lenders, um, and nobody wants to do it without some kind of skin in the game. Um, I had a couple of places kind of just tell me ba ba straight up that they just legally can't. Like they, I, I, I can't remember if it was specifically a restriction through the government or through whatever, but they were like, we just during this, like it would have been, so, there, I've had three people literally tell me, three people, not two. Three people literally tell me, they're like, uh, you could have got a home like with this, easy, your credit score's great, you have a little bit of income, um, stuff like that. But uh, right now, we we can't do 0% down. That's just not a thing. It, a couple months ago, it would have been easy. Now, we just can't do that. We need some skin in the game. So we need some cash, which is hard because even if you do 5%, 10% down on a house, it's a lot of money. <laughs> and you know, another crazy thing is the Boise area, we're looking at a lot of these homes, right? And we're looking at how much they're going for. And you can't get a home, right? A lot of people are saying, oh, like you're not going to get a good home for, you know, at least 300,000. Well, we've actually found a decent amount of homes between 200 and 250,000. The best, the most ideal, no, like 
But the thing is, is like I'm telling you now, this is the fastest growing place. So houses were already expensive. But the biggest thing is, is all of these houses that we were looking at, right? All of them. <laughs> we're looking at how much they were selling for six months ago, how much they were worth six, six months ago. And that's why I love Zillow, because you can look at these things. And six months ago, like, right, that house that I love with the studio, right, it was like 240000 right? Six months ago, that house sold for $175,000. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, what? And we've seen some houses have about near a $100,000 difference in six months. That is insane to me. And, like, I mean, here in Pocatello, pfft. Houses, you get a really, really good house for 200 G, like a really good house around. Like it's, I, I grew up here, right? Like I've lived in, like it's just. Ooh, I'm touching that right there, but <laughs> you can get some really great homes. So Boise is just, you know, of course it's a much bigger city, but during this coronavirus, I feel like a lot of people are moving for some weird reason, and houses are just selling and being posted every single day. Like it's going so quick. Even the houses were like, those are garbage. Get back on Zillow, and it's like sold. We're like. Oh, man, like, you know, like you just have to be at a point where you're just like, we have to be thankful with whatever we get. The biggest thing that we want at home, right, is because um, that we can have control of our podcast, right? Like if I want to have guests come over, I don't have someone above me saying, hey, you can't have anybody come over. You can't have guests come over, right? Um, things like that. Like we want to be able to say that. We want to be able to have our own say of who comes over to the place that we're paying for. And, of course, when you're renting, of course, the big dog's got the say in that, you know? And, uh, you know, of course, it comes to safety, like coronavirus, like if it was the beginning of how everything happened, we probably wouldn't be welcoming guests over here. But like now when things are coming down, we're practicing safety measures and we can build a set to maybe keep that six feet distance uh, the whole time, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? To at least try. Um, we just at least have that option. But of course, right now we have to do these Zoom meetings and I'm not a fan of them. Like I like to talk person to person. I like to just learn from them and it just feels so much more natural you know without that lag distance and things like that via zoom so that's one big thing and the second is just like we want to be able to have a space with where we can like actually kind of tear in the walls a little bit so i can actually build a little bit of a podcast setup like holding up lights and things like that same thing as for an editing editing places i want to be able to put certain you know there's like things like i like two screens when you when you're an editor or you do anything like graphic design or web design web design especially like things like that Two screens will change your life, man. <laughs> they will change your life. Uh, even even when I did homework the last couple of months, like it changed my life being able to like write an essay and like, you know, instead of like, it just, it's awesome. It sounds stupid, but like, I mean, I literally am using my $100 TV as my second monitor. You know, you got me humble. Take it, shit. Like it works, you know? But uh, yeah, so it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, I want to be able to build the, the build the room, build the set however I want to, and you can't do that with a rental. You're not allowed to dig holes and and mount things and things like that. So there's just a lot of restrictions, right? And at the end of the day, with the rental, right? Say your rent's a thousand bucks and you stay for a year, it's twelve thousand dollars <laughs> that gone. No matter what, there's no gamble, there's no nothing. That's just twelve thousand dollars gone for literally you'll never see that money again right with a house and now this is where a gamble can come in right you can get into a house and you put way more money into it than uh you were supposed to <laughs> and you can go upside down in it right like that's the possibility and that's not where we want to uh that's not where you want to be that's not a good spot to be but there's also the chance if you just take decent care of it try to uh, you know update it throughout the year as much as you can right I know there's such thing as closing costs and things like that, so it does dip into it a little bit. But the the goal of a home, right, is of course to make money when you get out, but at least to break even, right? If we lived into a home for a year, took good care of it, put a little bit of money into it, we might be able to break even than we had out of it. And especially right now in Boise, like I said, right, six months. If people have bought the house up there a month ago, right, and they wanted to sell, they're selling it way much more than what they bought it. Boy, they just made probably sixty, seventy thousand dollars over six months for not doing anything. They probably didn't even renovate or update anything. Just over the course of a couple of months with the market going crazy up, bam. And I've had numerous real estate agents tell me, like, if you don't get a house now, like, you need to. Like, it's not going to stop. There's, It's not going to crash or anything like that. Like, we just don't see it. It's only going to go up. You need to get into, a home, uh, get into a home as soon as you can. Sorry about the text messages. That's actually the, the, me and my fiance and family. We're all talking about this house situation. So... 
Um, but yeah, like it's just crazy during these times. I just didn't think that there would be this kind of craziness going on to buy a home. I was like, oh, we'll sneak out really quick because the biggest issue is, is we get kicked out of our apartment a couple of weeks, right? Like we have to be out, like there's nothing and we can move into a rental. But of course, money goes nowhere and have the same situation. But now we got to find a rental in Boise that allows pets. <sighs> That's an issue. And then, of course, the market will probably go up. So it's just like we need to get stuff going now, right? So buying a house during the coronavirus is just probably the hardest thing like I have ever done. <laughs> you know, like uh, moving into a home in general is just already like a scary process, scary thought. But now we're kind of taking a gamble of like, can we find a decent home to at least live in and try to profit some money off of? But at the same time, just try to break even, get some of this money back, be able to have whatever we want to do, have our own space, you know, like we're just, we're not very picky. Like we're just kind of like whatever house we can like really get, that's just decent, right? Because there's some houses you just don't want to get into, right? Like we found a house that was built in the 1920s and the house was literally like this. And in the basement, it had blocks holding up the house, which I didn't know. I did not know houses like sink in. <laughs> So he's like, oh, like the real estate guy was like, we got to leave. And I'm like, why? He's like, this is only going to get worse. <laughs> he's like, I mean, I have, a, I have a couple houses like literally on stilts. Like, and this is just like that. You don't want. And I'm like, ah, shit. So it's just like one of those things you just kind of have to watch for it and kind of be grateful for it. But uh, for even being able to look at a house and take what you can get. But hey, like, that's just the point. If we want a house, we might not be able to just in general afford, but be able to uh, move in and be able to do what we want to do. Um, we just might have to take a house that's, uh, that's available to us. Right. And so, uh, a couple other things I wanted to talk about, um, you know, the, the goals, right. The goals, why are we going to Boise? Like what's up? What's going on? <laughs> like what's in Boise? Right. Um, the thing is, is I have over 16 weddings coming up this summer. Um, I had more, but of course with things dropping at coronavirus, a lot of things happened. A lot of things changed. Right. And so a lot of these weddings are in Boise, you know, like, and being a videographer, being a, uh, that, you know, being real estate and all that kind of stuff, I'm consistently traveling to Boise and almost all of my weddings besides a couple are in Boise. So it's like, I just, and also on top of all that, like, you know, like I said, I want to have the experience of moving and going somewhere new, but you know, somewhat being somewhat close to the family and friends, just in case like we want to come down for gigs or, or if we just come to, or come down to visit family, things like that. Like we're not too far away. Right. So, uh, that's kind of one of the biggest things is we just kind of want to give that a shot and, um, you know, be close enough, but be far enough and stuff like that. So it's just kind of one of those things. And, um, yeah, so, the goal is just to get up there and grow the business and shoot weddings and start reaching out to more real estate people and try to get more into this video film world up there. And, you know, I heard the statement once. It's like, do you want to be a big fish in a small pond or a big, uh, a small fish in a big pond? Right. And here I feel like a big fish in a small pond. Right. There's only four or five videographers here that are really, really good. Um, and they are, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm up there with them. I feel decent. I feel like a quality work. I still have much, 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 much more to learn. And I feel like I'm under all these guys cause their work is just, but, um, in Boise, with some of these people got red cameras, things like that. You guys might not know what that is, but just very expensive cameras and really amazing equipment. And it's a different world that I'm jumping into and that I'm competing with, but it's something that I'm, I'm willing to like do like, you know, and you know, like I said, I might be a small fish up there, but I'm hoping to become a bigger fish throughout time, right? Like, I want to do really good customer support. I want to do great video. Like, one thing I noticed that, you know, through art and through video production, things like that, that I need to work on and grow. But one thing I do have now that I think I do really great with is customers, customer service, customer support. Like, I help all of my couples. When all this went down, I didn't have, like, a refund section specifically devoted to, you know, if there was a worldwide pandemic, do I get my money back? But I worked with all of my couples to make it work, to keep us both happy, to keep, you know, like, hey, listen, whenever you do reschedule your wedding, I'll cover it. Oh, hey, listen, if you're not going to do it, maybe I'll give half, you know, it's just working with these people, right? This will change and I already have new contracts with new information, but with all these people, I'm able to work with these people. I'm just able to give some awesome customer support, let them know, hey, three days and your video will be done. It will be done this Saturday by eight o'clock. Like it's just always being very, very clean, having great communication. But so I think there's some, some of that and also just growing my skill of videography, cinematography. 
and becoming the better videographer and trying to take over Boise, you know, not take it over, but I mean, becoming a bigger fish in that pond. So that's, that's some big things. Uh, just an update of kind of why, you know, I didn't mention it before, but kind of why we going up to, to Boise. Um, also income, right? (laughs) I have a business. I don't make a, a fantastic living off of it. You know, not just yet. Like this business has, I have so many, so much debt into it still after making decent money, but you know, it's such an investment to buy four or $5,000 cameras, three, 4,000 PCs, monitors, lenses, man, you'll put so much money into glass for your cameras. It's just crazy. Gimbals, glide cams, drones, so much, so much stuff, right? That just takes a lot of money to give in. And so with that being said, you know, I always have had a job and I will forever. Like if I have to work and grind at this business thing, like I will. And I kind of wanted to talk about that with you guys, right? If you're going to a new city, I like, you know, there's this this process that me and my fiance have. And I think it's a pretty dope process. And I think I, I just wanted to share with you guys is like, we just call it kind of like the tier system, right? Is you just can't, you know, say, I won't do that. I would never work there. Like you have to have, you have to be humble and take whatever income you can get, right? And, um, and the thing is, is that's what we did, right? So like when you're in the top tier, like I want to apply at agencies, creative places, video production, things that are right in my field, right up my alley, things that I would love to do that would be a career, full-time, good money type of stuff, right? And she did the same, you know, at the big, big leagues like Amazon, Costco, things like that, right? Great, great people to work with, great people to work for. But you do that. For I say, you know, at least some amount of time, right? We waited three to five days, you know, didn't hear anything back, right? But then we got a couple interviews, things like that. But the issue is, is like if you don't get anything really solid rolling with any of them, you drop down a tier, right? Like you're top tier and then you're like mid tier. This is the job where it's like, okay, retail when we're talking, well, like more like lower class retail or, you know, driver jobs or whatever it may be um, to you, like what you'd be like, yeah, I'm okay with doing it. It's not the great pay, but I like it type of stuff, right? And uh, you drop down to there and you, you apply within, you know, three days. You just apply, apply to everything you can get, right? And that's the spot we started hitting some interviews, right? Because those are like lower kind of average jobs. But then you drop down another tier, right? And that's like the jobs you would hate to do, right? Me, fast food. I, I was a dishwasher, cook, bus, uh, busser. I hated it. I hated food. But those are the jobs that you just don't want to do. But do the in, income's income, right? Money is money. And so, you know, you make this list in your head and you want to do it within, you know, a week, week and a half period, right? Start at the best, hear nothing and just go down, right? And I feel like you you should be able to hit something if you have some kind of decent resume and things like that. But um, we're both college graduates and here we are applying, you know, to everything. But um, thank God we we hit some jobs that are mid-tier, right? I'm doing like a, I have a couple of job officers for customer support, cleaning, things like that. I haven't accepted anything right now. I'm kind of just kind of waiting um, and they're, like I said, they're decent pay, not my favorite thing to do, but yo, I got to pay the bills and I ain't scared to pay the bills. Yo, I'll work until I can make Gagehorn Studios, the video production service, something until it can be something that like stands on its own, makes income on its own. I can put forth full, you know, my full focus on that and run with it, but I'm not going to do it unless I pay my bills and keep things up to tab. It's like, if that's the grinding process, right? Is being able to do something you love, but also being able to be able to fi- be financially stable to pay those things. And so, um, but yeah, but the, the reason I want to say that is just like, don't like turn down jobs, right? Like, even though I hated it, right? I wouldn't turn down, right? At the end of the day, like, I'm going to grind. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to take the job that I got a job to pay the bills, period, right? So you just do this tier system and apply to the best paying jobs, the jobs that you just love to be at, all the way down and uh at the end of the day if you got to work mcdonald's do these things grind or whatever you got to be or wherever you got to do um that may, you know it may be different for you maybe you like food but you would hate uh customer support right customer supports are great paying jobs but people get mentally exhausted thus is why i'm probably not going to set mine but point being is just you know take the income what you can when you move into a new place like i am right and my fiance like We got to take anything we can and we got to pay the bills one way or another, right? I'm not going to be like, I will not do that. Fuck no, I won't. Like, Or or fuck yeah, I will. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? (laughs) I will do the work, right? Like, I'm the guy that I mowed lawns for five years through high school and part of college. Just mowed lawns. And that is a very, 
exhausting job. You know, wake up s- right when daylight breaks and uh, you go all the way down to when it's almost dark, Friday, Saturday, and half of Sunday for a good solid three years mowing lawns uh, for like six months out of the year. It was, it's exhausting. It's truly exhausting, physically exhausting. I mean, I felt like I was in a lot of good shape, but you know, it was just a really tiring job and a really kind of expensive job too. Like, I mean, you're showing up with all of your thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment to mow and get $25. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's its own process, but it was a grind. Right. And so, you know, I'm not afraid to do it. I just don't like it. Right. Like all of us, like at the end of the day, I think all of us should be willing to drop our, our pride and things like that and get grinding compared to, uh, you know, I don't want to do it and move on, blah, blah, blah. No, do it, make the money, and then just keep applying to try to move up in that tier list to something you want to be at, right? So just a little bit something for you guys. But the income thing is also an issue, right? When you move, uh, especially cities or town to city, whatever it is, is you can't claim that income for a loan. I was like, you know, I have uh, two jobs, my business and a job, and my fiance has two jobs. Well, three of those jobs, besides my business, will be left, and we're looking for new jobs there, but the business, right? So when I call the guy and talk to finance, people are like, uh, we can't finance you because you're dropping three income, and your business is not two years yet. You have to have two years of taxes and tax information and things like that to be able to claim that income. I barely have half a year, but I did do my taxes um, for the first year, so that does count, but it's not like even a full year, right? Because I started July, and so that's only July to the December that, you know, got to count. So either way, I have to wait till two years of tax income to claim that income. So basically we're saying, hey, give us a mortgage with zero income. They're like, mm, before, now you need skin in the game. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, so we're trying to do this awkward transition phase to where we're trying to get into Boise and live somewhere while trying to work, then claim that income to then buy a house. But what place can you rent for a couple of months without paying out the ass to like uh, break out of that? You know, because most places want a year lease. And so you're trying to do a three month and break that contract. It gets very, very weird. I don't know if you guys have any ideas at all. Please drop in the comments below or, you know, join the conversation on Imperfect Fam because I have no idea. <laughs> like we're just kind of trying to like what's better, you know, trying to get a home, trying to get a house, trying to or trying to get a rental, trying to get a job and flipping and things like that. So it can be a little bit weird. But at the end of the day, we just got to do what we got to do. You know, that's where we we know we want to be there and we're just going to have to take every step following down the list of, you know, best to best down until we can make it work, right? If we have to show up in a rental for a year and deal and try to find a place like to have cats and deal with, you know, things like that, then we're going to do it. Period, right? Like we got to just we got to do what got to be done. I'm not very mad about that, right? Like, I understand that people don't want to give us money because they don't have, we don't have solid income, we don't have a great business, and or two years of taxes, things like that. You got to play it by the rules, right? So, it's crazy, but, you know, you got to do it. And so, um, lastly, I just want to tell you guys, uh, thank you so much for watching Imperfect. Uh, I know it's a little bit weird, I know it's a little bit weird with this, like, kind of just me talking to you guys, kind of throwing thoughts out there. Just kind of have this idea, and I kind of just want to talk about it, start this conversation, grow our imperfections, grow to be better human beings, grow to all these kinds of things. Um, but, you know, I just have these ideas, and I want to throw them out, and I want to kind of keep you guys updated. I want to be honest with you guys, be real with you guys. Um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to, like, an actual set for the podcast, but... If we have to get a place or a rental and we have to do it out of our living room, if we have to do it out of the fucking bathroom, I'm like, I don't care. Like, if we got to do it somewhere that we're not going to, you know, have our own set, like, that's what it is. And we'll just keep working hard until we can get what we want in this life, you know, a decent home and decent things, like, and to do decent trips and do bigger film projects, things like that. Like, we just, you just have to grind, you know, you just have to put your full faith into it, trust the process, enjoy the process, don't ever look for the destination, enjoy the process right now, but uh, just, you know, if that's the goal, that's the goal, chase it, follow it, stick to it, and don't give up, right, just don't give up, like, there's so many times I'm just like, man, some of these jobs, I could just take a full-time job, and just, like, give up the business, and I have to worry about flexibility, and taking off Saturdays for weddings, and things like that, just take the job, and be done with it, right, why not, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I just, I feel like I can be really good at this video thing. And although I have much more to learn, I feel like at some point in my life, I'll be a really good videographer. 
and or director or you know writer things like that but it's going to take time to work on these things and build these film projects and practice all all aspects of the film job and then maybe one day be where I want to be in the filmmaking community things like that so regardless guys uh, thank you guys so much for watching um, I do have some more guests coming on um, I'm going to keep that process going. You know, we are in the middle of moving. So whenever we do sell a house, I'll try to keep you guys updated, like I said, and try to keep these uh, episodes every single Wednesday. But it is a process and uh, finding a job and trying to get a home and probably having to get a car because I've avoided that for years now, but probably need to get one of those. I can't just walk everywhere in a big city. So crazy, crazy things. But I'm super grateful. I'm super happy. You know, I feel like I put in the six years of college work, man. Six years. And I'm just happy to graduate. I feel like it's finally like time to actually live and move on and, and kind of live a little bit, you know. So anyways, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. New episode coming out next Wednesday. Peace out.